Hey, this is the Goins family. We have been missionaries with BIMI since 2002, and we've been living here in Honduras for more than 13 years. Uh, we're excited about uh, God's calling on our lives to come here and serve in the ministry and be a part of the global effort of world evangelism and making disciples of all nations. We're excited to show you a little bit about what goes on in the ministry each week here in Honduras.
It's good to be back at Valley Forge Baptist Temple, and I'm excited to be here. It's like a second home to us. Uh, when we come back, all of you are so kind. Uh, thank you, Pastor Wendell, for allowing me to share from, from this sacred place tonight, uh, preaching the Word of God. Uh, I'm, as I see the video... I miss, I miss being down there. <laughs> we have a lot to do. We have a lot more to do. We're excited about uh, what God is doing in Honduras. And so really the point of the video, you see a lot of photos, a lot of uh, video, but I hope you got the point. Uh, all glory, all glory be to Christ. Uh, Christ has done everything uh, through us, we are no different uh, than anybody sitting here. Uh, God has placed us there. God has placed you here. Uh, we're all in this together. And we're just trying to do everything we can to bring Jesus Christ honor. We'll be in Acts chapter 6 tonight. Acts chapter 6. When Jesus Christ was transitioning back to heaven, and he said, uh, all uh, power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That was his last command, uh, which should be given first priority by us. And then in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. So they were to wait for the power and then do the job. And so tonight we're going to be looking at the profile of an empowered witness, the profile of an empowered witness in Acts chapter 6. The word witness here in Acts chapter 1 in verse 8 is the Greek word martus or martur, and you probably uh, understand the relationship with the word we use, martyr. A witness was somebody whose lives and actions testified to the worth and effect of their faith, and yet we relate it to martyrdom uh, because uh, nothing could change their compassion, their, their commitment, and their loyalty to that message. And so uh, tonight, as we give you the context of Acts chapter 6, uh, we see in verse number 1, it says, and in those days when the number of the disciples uh, was multiplied. And so we see here, just, just to establish the context here in Acts chapter 6, the church is multiplying. Church is happening. Disciples are being made. The Holy Spirit uh, is making growth happen in uh, the local church there in Jerusalem. And so we see that the, the church is growing and it's doing what uh, Jesus Christ asked them to do. And that's what every New Testament church should be doing. Uh, should be ministering where they are, seeing the Holy Spirit work in that area and seeing that growth, that multiplication and that depth in the discipleship. And so we see a church multiplying. Then also in verse number one, we see that a murmuring arose within the church. And so many times, uh, what are those growth pains as a, as a ministry grows? Uh, not only is there multiplication, but there is uh, problems that happened. There was murmuring going on because of uh, some, you know, some issues with the administration uh, or the administration of, uh, uh, of the distribution to some widows. There was a, a disagreement between the Hellenists, which were Jews that ex had accepted Greek culture, and the Hebrews, which were the Jews that had retained their Hebrew culture culture. And so there's a, there's a dispute. We see that the, the leaders of this church, the apostles, they got together and in order to keep the mission on track, which the track is go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. And so let's not get off track with this murmuring thing. And so the leaders wanted to get everything back on the rails, back on track. And so they, they talked about priorities, the word of God and prayer, and they talked about partners, having a team to help with the ministry. And once they got that lined up, we see back again in verse number, uh, verse number six, or verse number seven, it says, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And so this is the context of what's happening. The local church in Jerusalem multiplying, had a 
skid stop because of some murmuring. The leaders got it all back on track with the focus on the priority, the focus on partners in the ministry to continue the multiplication once again. So that's the context of what's going on here. Verse number three talks about when they were establishing those partners uh, for the ministry. Many see uh, the first deacons coming out of this group of men that were helping in the ministry. The Bible says in verse three, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. Remember back when we saw that word, uh, Acts 1-8, witnesses is the word martus, mar- martyr. Uh, that word is related with the translation of, of honest report here. Basically, it's a passive participle uh, that, that has the idea of reputation of being witnesses. Choose you out among you seven men with good reputation of being witnesses. That's, that's the tie-in with the word from Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. We are all witnesses. Uh, we are all in this together. Many times, I'll never forget the, the first time that we had a work project in Honduras, getting the men together to do, do a little bit of a cleanup and construction. And so we got these guys together to do a work project. And one of the men in our church who was pretty well to do, he said, you know, I can't come that day, uh, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send someone in my place. I'm going to pay that man a daily wage. We didn't know him. We didn't know the man he was going to pay. He said, we'll just pay this man. I'll pay this man. He'll come to the church. He'll work with all of you guys, uh, and, and he'll be my substitute for the work project. And that might work for a work project, but that doesn't work in missions. Uh, all of us are required and have a job to do. And, and you can't just throw money at the problem and say, those missionaries are going to take care of it for me. We're all in this together. And the, the task of global evangelization is going to take a team effort here locally and globally around the world. Uh, where we are in Honduras, uh, we are training the people to look locally. We're out evangelizing every week. Uh, we have many ways to minister. Uh, we're also looking globally. Uh, our church in Honduras has uh, supported now for seven years missionaries by Faith Promise. Uh, and uh, they support 17 missionaries right now by Faith Promise. Uh, we n- next see that there will be people leaving from our congregation. We have a local church plant, but we see missionaries going next. Uh, that's where we're, where we're going. And so it's a team effort. In an 1873 message, uh, Charles Spurgeon, the, the message was entitled, A Sermon and a Reminiscence. Charles Spurgeon said this, Every Christian here is either a missionary or an imposter. Recollect that. That's what he said. Recollect that. You either try to spread abroad the kingdom of Christ or else you do not love him at all. It cannot be that there is a high appreciation of Jesus in a totally silent tongue about him. That's powerful. What are you tonight? Are you a missionary or someone involved in the missions effort, the witnessing effort? And that's my encouragement for you tonight. Here in this chapter 6 of the book of Acts, we see the profile of an empowered witness. Stephen uh, is an example of a Holy Spirit-empowered witness who found his place and did his part in the overall plan of world evangelization. In this passage, we will see five elements, five characteristics of the Holy Spirit-empowered witness. Uh, His requirement, his responsibility, his resistance, his reaction, and his reward. And I want to encourage you tonight as a believer to find your place and do your part as an empowered witness right here where you are and if the Lord should lead you somewhere else doing the job there as well because we're all in this together as witnesses and we can't pay for substitutes to do the job for us we are all part of the team the first thing we see tonight is a witness Requirement, a witness's requirement. We have requirements in life. Uh, we have an age requirement on driver's licenses. Uh, we have 
height requirements for getting on a roller coaster. We have weight requirements uh, for loading up an elevator. I remember that in college. We'd load up the elevator to get to the next uh, level where our dorm rooms were. And uh, as soon as the bell started ringing, somebody had to get off because there was a weight requirement on that elevator. We have education requirements for getting into college. Here we see that there is a requirement for being a witness. There is a requirement for being a witness. Uh, Look with me in verse number three. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Now look down to verse number five, where the Bible says, And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Verse number eight, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Verse number 10, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. If you looked over into chapter 7, verse 55, just before Stephen dies, the Bible says, he being full of the Holy Ghost. Five different verses, all of them have one common denominator, being full of the Holy Spirit, that power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, We also see an interchange of faith and wisdom, full of faith, full of wisdom, full of faith, totally trusting in God, full of wisdom, applying that Trust in God to your daily life. And and those things will lead you to being full of the Holy Spirit. So we see a a requirement for being a witness. If you you have your Bible with you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 1. First Corinthians 2, 1, the Bible says, And I, brethren, the Apostle Paul speaking, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So here we see Paul giving testimony about his manner of going about business, preaching the gospel. God doesn't require education to be a witness. God doesn't require wealth to be a witness. God doesn't require popularity or a winsome personality to be a witness. God doesn't require strength or health to be a witness. The common denominator in being a witness for God in this world is when he said in Acts chapter 1-8, wait for the power. The power of the Holy Spirit. When we have the power of the Holy Spirit, he does what we cannot do. And I'm thankful for that. Because we're limited in what we can do. We see the requirement for witness here in, in this profile of an empowered witness the Holy Spirit's power was necessary. It, this phrase has been attributed to Francis of Assisi, a Catholic friar who died in 1226. And he said the following, allegedly, preach the gospel at all, all times. If necessary, use words. Well, that, that sounds cute, but it's impossible to preach the gospel without words. We have to use words. Uh, I understand what he's trying to emphasize, uh, living the gospel, and, and certainly that is a part. But the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so people have to hear the word of God. The, the gospel has to be communicated to other people in order for them to have a, 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 a work done in their heart by the word of God. We have uh, things that we use in Honduras to help open the door for the gospel. Uh, We 
obviously should let our light so shine before men that they see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. But we, we must preach the gospel. Uh, we have a, a, a children's home ministry with the purpose of helping socially at-risk children in their time of need and getting the gospel to those children and bringing them up in a loving, nurturing, Christian home environment. Uh, we know who their parents are or guardians, and we go to them as a church, and we try to reach them with the gospel. Uh, we have a medical ministry where once a year right now, we have a medical team come down with medical missions outreach, and we use that to open doors for the gospel. And, and we're building a permanent facility on our property with the purpose of bringing surgical teams down once a month but with the sole purpose of opening doors in the community so that our church people can get in and give those people the gospel. The requirement of a witness is to be full of the Holy Spirit. We also see a witness's responsibility. Verse number eight in Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. A, a witness... A Holy Spirit-empowered witness is active in doing the work of God. Notice how the, the Bible describes Stephen here. It describes his reputation full of faith and power, power being synonymous with that uh, dunamis power from the Holy Spirit. And Stephen, the verb is did. And Stephen did. The activity involved in being a witness, a witness, a witness's responsibility. We see here a witness's work. Stephen did great wonders and miracles. In this time of the apostles, God used the miracles and the signs and the wonders to authenticate his word, to confirm the, the messenger uh, that was giving the message uh, but now we don't need those type of signs and wonders. We have the complete word of God, and we do well to pay heed to this like a, a light shining in a dark place, Peter said. And so here we see that he was doing work. God is doing great work through Stephen. The works may not be the same that we do, but the work is the same. We're not going to do signs and wonders and miracles, but what was the purpose of doing the signs and the wonders and the miracles in that day? It was to authenticate the word. It was to get the gospel to the people. And so we're not going to see the same works, but we will do the same work. And so when we have a Holy Spirit-empowered witness, what Jesus Christ did is what we will be active doing, that, that compassionate ministering, that loving care, that association with people. Uh, I do not do miracles in Honduras. There are quite a few that allegedly do miracles in Honduras. We, we have miracle crusades all the time, but I have seen miracles. I've seen a man who was enslaved to alcohol now become a faithful father and husband. I've seen young children pulled off the street on their way to early pregnancies, drug abuse, and now they are serving in the local church, maintaining their purity. That's a, those are miracles that are happening where we are. Uh, we know people, we could tell you people, in fact, when we get to heaven, I, I want your attention because I want you to meet some of these people. I want to show you Alexis and say, this is Alexis. Alexis used to assault people to steal money from them or to steal their bikes and sell their bikes for money. And then he would take that money and he would buy drugs. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a father, but not a, a husband. He'd never been married. He was an abuser of alcohol. He uh, couldn't hold a steady job. And when Christ came into his life, Jesus Christ did a miracle. And now, Alexis is teaching our youth. He married his girlfriend at the time. They have a beautiful family. God has blessed his business. And he is the one that has been the general contractor on all of the buildings that you saw there on our 10 acres of property. 
God did that. That's a miracle. And I could take you from miracle to miracle to miracle. We're not going to see the same works as, as Stephen is doing here. But it's the same work. Jesus Christ is doing great work in people's lives, transforming lives. You must have the Holy Spirit to be able to do that work. And, and, and you need to understand that our responsibility as witnesses is activity in that work. We must do. We must be involved. We see a witness's work, but we also see a witness's world. Where was Stephen? The Bible says here in verse number 8, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles. Where did he do great wonders and miracles? Stephen was among the people. A witness's world is among people. It's making relationships. Maybe you've heard this before. You, you have no impact without contact. We must make contact. We must all intentionally make contact with people. Uh, keeping tracks on your person is intentionality. Being open to starting a conversation with a complete stranger is intentionality. Uh, making eye contact and smiling is intentionality. Inviting a coworker or neighbor and family into your home is intentionality. Participating in the outreach events of your local church is intentionality. We're not going to be witnesses if we don't get out among the people who need the witness. And so we must understand we should be active in doing, but we don't need to only have friends who are Christians. We don't only need to mingle in circles of people that believe what we do and, and act like us and look like us. We need to be intentional about getting our, our message to the people around us. Uh, Jesus Christ was accused of being a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Can we be accused of that? We know he didn't participate in sin, but that's who he associated with because he had a purpose to seek and to save that which was lost and so as witnesses our responsibility is to be intentional about getting that work out in the holy spirit's power we move to the resistance a witness's resistance verse 9 the bible talks about a dispute that arose uh, stephen is full of the holy ghost and and full of wisdom and faith he is doing among the people and this shouldn't surprise us. Uh, in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And here we see a, a dispute arises. Verse number 9, Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Later we see that they suborned men or they bribed men to speak uh, falsely against him. They stirred up the people in verse number 12. They set up the false witnesses in verse number 13. And so here we see uh, unjust persecution against this witness. This man is full of the Holy Spirit. He is doing good things through the power of the Holy Spirit for the global plan of getting the gospel out. He's among the people, and here's this opposition that rises up. Opposition can take many forms. Uh, many forms. You can see that uh, there's verbal opposition. Uh, there is physical opposition, spiritual opposition, which uh, frankly is, is, is the most a common type of opposition you will face in doing the work of the Lord. And then you'll find a, a psychological opposition, fears that will come in. Uh, not long ago, it was referenced by Pastor Wendell, we had disputed presidential elections in Honduras. And uh, I've been around a lot in Honduras. Uh, I've been around shootings, live shootings. I've seen people killed in front of my face. I've, I have carried dead bodies of people recently killed. Uh, I've been around quite a few things, and I've never felt fear. I've never felt in danger. I always knew that God had us right where he wanted us to be, and we we're doing his work. There's nothing to fear. 
But I will say that over the Christmas holidays, when we were having all of the unrest, uh, there were five days where we could not leave our home. Uh, we, were ha- we had to stay put, uh, shelter in place is what the embassy told us to do. And fear was creeping in, I'll tell you that. Uh, it, was, it was one of those things where what's going to happen? Uh, there was looting going on. There was violence. There were, uh, you know, psychological warfare going on with um, social media being sent out. We're going to come for you. We're going to do this and that. And I, what I had to do is I had to remind myself, uh, this is not the first time a Christian is facing any type of opposition. There's a whole lot of people going through uh, a lot worse circumstances than what we are going through. We, we are in a home. We are in a comfortable place. But I had to remind myself that God is in control. And God is leading. And God is guiding. And, and if it is his will that we give our lives on the mission field in this time, so be it. But I also had to remind myself, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the opposition that comes in many forms, the verbal and the physical and the psychological and the spiritual, uh, they can't, the opposition cannot resist a Holy Spirit-empowered witness to get the job done. God will advance. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And here we see the same thing in this profile of an empowered witness. Verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So here we see this witness that was full of the Holy Spirit. That's the requirement for getting the job done. The power comes after the filling. Then we see the responsibility where we must be actively doing the Lord's will among the people. We see that there will be opposition, but we have to understand that God puts us in position sometimes to be a witness when we would not previously have been a witness because of the position we're in at that current moment. You know, we're, we have a whole lot of open doors now after all the unrest than we had before the unrest. That leads us to the witness's reaction A witness's reaction, verse 15, and all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Someone who had been in God's presence. An angel is a minister, uh, an attendant for the Lord that does his bidding, does his will. And, And as the council looked on Stephen, I'm not sure exactly what it looked like, but In the words of the inspired writer, their perspective was, this guy has been with God. When the pressures of life squeeze you, what comes out? When you're put in a position that is unjust, like Stephen was in, unfair, when you're put in a place that's uncomfortable, when, when the pressures of this world squeeze you, what comes out? Well, if you're filled with the flesh, if you're filled with self, then the works of the flesh are going to come out. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Galatians chapter 5, 19 and 20. But if you're filled with the Spirit, what's going to come out? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We're, we're all witnesses. We all need the filling of the Holy Spirit to have the power to witness. We all need to be doing where we're called to be right now. We all need to be among the people. There will be resistance, and when that resistance comes, what's going to come out of you? A, a Holy Spirit-empowered witness is going to ooze the Holy Spirit when he's pressed and pressured and, and beat down. And here we see Stephen later on, just as he's about to die, telling the Lord, don't lay this sin to their charge. Only God can do that. The last thing we see is a witness's reward. 
And this will take us to chapter 7, verse 55. Stephen gives a a dissertation uh, on where they'd come from, and he's preaching to these people. He's telling them the truth and the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 55 says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. You know, here we see that Stephen has come to the end of his life. Uh, We don't know where our life will end. We don't know at what point we will be taken out of the game. But this is how we want to come to the end. We want to come to the end faithful. We want to come to the end uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit, reacting spiritually so that when we are in the Lord's presence, as we look on his face, as we see his glory, we don't hide from him in shame, but we have confidence before him because we were in him. We persevered until the end. And here is where we see the, the witness's reward. That confidence before the Lord when it comes to the end. And we hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. He doesn't mention talent. He doesn't mention riches. He doesn't mention the wisdom. He mentions faithfulness. That faithful witness coming to the end of his life. As we look at Philippians chapter 1 and verse 20, and the Apostle Paul said that he was uh, in, a, in a strait betwixt two. And then he said, uh, what I want is Christ to be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. When you're a Holy Spirit-empowered witness, doing the work of the Lord among the people that he is seeking to save. And you reach that opposition and you are forced to react and you react spiritually. And God is pleased. We see that reward where we hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, welcome into my presence. And Paul understood that to die is gain for the faithful witness. There's no, there's no fear in death. The requirement of a witness is being filled with the Holy Spirit. The responsibility of a witness is doing God's work intentionally among the people of this world. The resistance to a witness will come in many forms, but will be overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. The reaction of a witness must be spiritual and not carnal if we want to be used by God in this great effort of world evangelism and the reward for a witness is confidence before his Lord knowing that he or she did what was asked. We see that this man, Stephen, was the catalyst for a missions movement. His witness, his Holy Spirit-empowered witness, if you look into chapter 8, verse 1, therefore they that were scattered abroad First, verse 1, it says, And at that time there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, where they were supposed to be going, except the apostles. Verse 4 says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. It started with a man that was wholly consecrated to the Lord as a witness, where he was, helping in his ministry, where he was assigned to be, doing the work, among the people, reacting spiritually. And we see that that witness catapulted the church into the next level of of a missions movement in that region. So I want to encourage you tonight, find your place and do your part in the power of the Holy Spirit. May we pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to share with your people tonight in this flock Thank you for the profile of a spiritual witness as we find in Acts chapter 6. And Father, as we all analyze our part in this effort, not all of us will go (coughs) abroad, 
but all of us are witnesses. And, and help us, Lord, to be full of your Holy Spirit, to do your work and uh, react spiritually to the opposition that comes so that one day we see your face and, and in your glory hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, use this conference as a catapult for this ministry to do even more for missions. In Christ's name we pray, amen.